Hello, Patreon people. Welcome. I apologize for the delay. I got myself a new computer, which is a lot like getting a new car. It's a little bit cheaper and uh, about as aggravating, but luckily we are back on track. It's only a couple days. I believe we will all survive. This week in our wonderful Patreon world, say hello to Honey Pie, we have two songs to talk about. You're going to get four parts of audio from the White Album. We are entering side three for you White Album fans. The first song on side three of the White Album, of course, is birthday on an unrelated note. My mother is having a birthday coming up this Saturday, technically, that has nothing to do with the Beatles, but it doesn't mean that you can't say happy birthday, Greg's mom, on Saturday. Um, for the recording session for birthday, the band decided that they were going to go early into the studio, which was at four or five in the afternoon, and record a little bit, and then take a break and go home to Paul's house, where they were going to watch a film that was being broadcast called... The Girl Can't Help It. The Girl Can't Help It is from 1956. All the Beatles saw it before they even knew one another. Little Richard is in it. Eddie Cochran is in it. It is excellent. That's where the band Rock Pile gets their name. Dave Edmonds and Nick Lowe's outfit from the 80s. There's a song in the film called Rockin' at the Rock Pile. That's also not really a Beatle-related no. But the day was September 18th, 1968. They recorded a rock and roll rhythm track, but they had no lyrics for the song. Then they all took a walk down to Paul's house. This is Paul and uh, John, George, and Ringo. Um, Mal Evans, their assistant, was there. Yoko Ono was there. Chris Thomas, who was the guy who was filling in for uh, George Martin, who was on vacation at the time, he also went with. They hung out. They watched the movie. They had some dinner. They probably smoked a little bit of dope. And then they went back to the studio, and they put the lyrics that John and Paul wrote onto the song. They wrote a song about birthday because they thought they felt it was a celebratory song on the track Yoko Ono and Patty Boyd sing and they were very proud of the old style rock and roll sound it is a bit back of getting back to the basics they also used technology that was modern to them which of course featured overdubs and tambourines and lots and lots of takes it's a super fun song as lyrically sparse as it might be it's one of the more popular songs and as I've stated earlier everybody has a birthday. The next song you're going to hear about is Your Blues, another one of those misspelled things. Y-E-R is not how you're supposed to spell Your Blues, but I'm okay with that. John wrote that while he was ridden in India. It is quite the downer of a song. Um, He was feeling very, very down at the time. He was uh, involved with Yoko Ono, although Cynthia didn't know that. Cynthia Lennon was there in India with John, and they weren't really getting along at the time. On the plane ride home from India was where their um, their marriage officially began to more officially crumble. Uh, the Beatles always had an attitude of, if they can do it, we can do it too. And there was a lot of blues rock and roll coming out from Britain. Bands like the Animals and the Stones, of course the Who, and Fleetwood Mac were really, really, um, they were getting kind of popular. And the Beatles thought, if they're going to do a blues song... We can do it too. So that becomes your blues. John wrote the lyrics and he does something rather unusual that he hadn't done before. He mentions a specific song from another artist. He mentions a song called Ballad of a Thin Man, which is a Bob Dylan composition in which he has Mr. Jones. So when he's talking about Dylan's Mr. Jones, that's who he's talking about. Another big influence of John's was Sleepy John Estes. And you'll get to hear a little bit about that in the recording. Um, John came home from India recorded the demo very early in the sessions they were working on the track. There were some different lyrics on the demo that they switched around. He was not suicidal. He was insecure on the demo. And um, at the very, very beginning of the song, you hear something really cool. That you hear a lot of cool things on the White Album. These are the things that are part of the recording that aren't supposed to be on the record. You hear Ringo starting off the two, three, which um, wasn't something that was heard a lot. The White Album has all kinds of little interesting hunks of audio that aren't part of the song, but they're still part of the song. Blisters on My Fingers being a classic example. When they recorded it, because George Martin was absent at this time as well, they recorded it super, super loud in the studio. This is why some of the recording mics picked up other elements that weren't uh, supposed to be on that track. If you listen real close during the solo near the end, you could still sort of hear John's lyric it's not necessarily supposed to be there, but again, they were the Beatles, it's the White Album, and as Paul McCartney so elo eloquently said about the White Album, it is the bloody White Album. Shut up. That's Paul's quote. 
not mine. I say thank you all the time. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you for spending another month with me. Thank you for enjoying my new computer. I hope you enjoy your video. Oh, sorry again for the delay. Happy birthday, Mom. And that is all. I'm Professor Moptop. Thank you.